Welcome back everybody, I'm Robert Breaker and this will be my Sermon of the Week this week. It's been a very, very long week and it's just begun. Um, most weeks I try to do my recording for the Sunday Sermon, the Sunday Message for the Cloud Church. I try to do it on a Wednesday or Thursday, sometimes I get behind and I do it on a Friday. And I post those usually on a Thursday or Friday, maybe even a Saturday. And you're supposed to watch it on Sunday, that's supposed to be the Sunday Message. But some people cheat. Some people will watch it as soon as it comes out. I guess that's okay. But a lot of people around the world tell me they don't have a good church home to go to. And I've heard from so many people all over the world that they get together on Sunday and they literally sit down at the um, TV and in a group, in a home. You know, in the Bible, they actually met in homes is how they started Christianity. And uh, they will uh, study and have service in their house. And so that's what the Cloud Church is. It's for people that don't have a church to go to, and this can be church for them. But if you do have a home church, well, then you can watch it on Friday or Saturday, too, or whenever you want to. That's fine. That's fine. Well, the message I have today is not going to be very long. I'm going to do my best to be able to uh, teach something to you here today. And I hope that this will be a word of encouragement. That's all I desire to do today is try to be an encouragement to you. So go to Titus chapter 2 and verse 13, and we'll start there today. Uh, I've had some folks lately say, Brother Breaker, I'm just so kind of depressed. I'm so disappointed because I really, really, really wanted Jesus to come back at the rapture. Well, he's still coming, okay? I don't want you to be disappointed. don't want you to be down in the dumps. I want you to keep looking up. And that is the name of my sermon today, Keep Looking Up. Keep looking to the clouds. Keep looking up for Jesus to return because he will. He is coming very, very soon. And I can't wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back. And I want to encourage you with Titus chapter 2 and verse 13. And Titus chapter 2 and verse 13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Every day we need to be looking and looking up and waiting and expecting his soon return. A lot of promises in the Bible of when Jesus Christ is coming back and that he is coming back. So we gotta be ready for his return. So keep looking up every day. And that's a great verse there about the rapture, Titus 2.13, but I thought, hey, for fun, let's read the context. What should we be doing while we're looking up, while we're waiting? In the context is verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So while we're looking up, while we're waiting for the rapture, we should be denying evil. We should be doing our best to live right. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world as we're, verse 13, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. Thank God for that. He gave himself for our sins on the cross. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So that's what we ought to be doing until the Lord comes back, do our best to do right. Uh, sanctification, daily living, living for the Lord, looking up, waiting, looking for his soon return. And then it says, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Let's go to Philippians real quick. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20 and 21. And I just want to encourage you. I've run across some people lately that are just so discouraged. Brother Breaker, I just can't believe what I'm seeing in the world and everything's going the wrong direction and everything bad is happening and this and that and the other thing. And it's like, no, 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 no. Just keep looking up. Just keep a positive attitude. Be happy and say, man, I know he's coming. I know he's coming soon. And just keep looking. Keep looking up. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. And uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20 says, For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So keep looking up and look for Him and His soon return. Because I believe it's soon. With everything that's happening in the world, I believe that Jesus Christ is coming soon at the rapture. And it says, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things unto Himself. 
So Jesus Christ is going to give us a glorified body at the rapture. It's a resurrection for those that have died in Christ. It's a changing in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye for us. And we get a glorified body. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. There's many, many places in the Bible that speak about the coming of Jesus Christ. And I've taught you correctly in teaching you that the first time Jesus came, he came in two parts. He came born, that's the first part. Lived 33 years, died, buried, rose again. Went up to heaven, but then he came back. And there's seven appearances of Jesus Christ. And then in the book of Acts, we see Jesus ascending up into heaven. So there was two parts of the coming of Christ, the first advent. And it was in two parts. Well, the second coming of Jesus Christ is in two parts. First, the rapture. Seven years later, after the tribulation period, at Armageddon, Jesus returns. So he's got to come back to get us first. And then we're going to go up for the judgment seat of Christ, what some call the Bema seat, because that's the word in the Greek language, Bema. And that's where we get our rewards for Jesus. And then we're up in heaven with him, and we come back with him at the battle of Armageddon. We are that army on white horses with him. And so there must be a pre-tribulation rapture for that to take place. And over here in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28, look at what it says. Hebrews 9, 28, For Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. There's a dual application in that verse. It's written to Hebrews. So Jews that miss the rapture and are left behind and go through Jacob's trouble, the time of the tribulation, the 70, 70th week of Daniel, that seven years, they'll be looking for their Messiah to come back. But we, before all that, are looking for Jesus to come back. And you know, when he comes at the rapture, he's coming without sin. He came the first time as a sinless substitute. He's coming again as the sinless Savior. So we can doubly apply that to the rapture and to Armageddon. But it says that he's coming back unto them that look for him. I'm looking for him. Are you looking? Keep looking up, looking for that blessed hope. Keep looking for Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. I'm not going to keep you long today. I just have a few verses for sake of time and for able to get through this week. I had so much going on. I just, I've got visitors coming. I've got lots of things happening. And uh, so I've just got to give you a kind of an encouraging message. Just give you some verses and ask you to keep looking up. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What is the kingdom of God? Well, that's the spiritual kingdom that we read about in the Bible. There's the kingdom of heaven, which is the physical kingdom down here when Jesus reigns for a thousand years. But the kingdom of God is within you, we read in the book of Luke. And in the book of Romans, it says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. So it's the spiritual kingdom of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ reigning in your heart, Jesus and the Holy Spirit in you. That's the kingdom of God. Are you saved? Have you sought the kingdom of God? It's a beautiful verse, but it's also a beautiful hymn. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's a beautiful hymn. It's actually in Spanish too. Are you doing that? Are you looking up? Are you seeking for Jesus' return? Are you saying, Lord, I want you to come more than anything. Please, Lord Jesus, come back and take us unto you. Acts chapter 17 and verse 27. Here the apostle Paul tells us some things that we should seek. Or actually, he tells the lost pagan people what they should seek. The lost world needs Jesus. The problem is many in the lost world don't want Jesus. They don't care about Jesus. They don't want to hear anything about Jesus. And yet he's the only answer. Everything that they want in this world is what Jesus offers. And they don't see that. They want a world without, uh, you know, pollution. Well, Jesus is coming back to rule for a thousand years. They want a world without arms, you know, get rid of guns, gun control. We need this. We when Jesus comes back, it's a time of peace for a thousand years in which he's in the millennial kingdom. And the sword shall be beaten into plowshares, the Bible says. I mean, everything that they're trying to do 
is what God said he'd promised he'd do for us. And they want a world where one person is the ruler of the whole world. And he's a Christ, only he's the Antichrist. Well, Jesus comes back, he's the one ruler of the whole world, but yet he's benevolent ruler, not a dictator like the Antichrist. So the world is trying to make a false millennial kingdom. They're trying to imitate or counterfeit what Jesus is going to set up. And they're trying to do it in their own strength without God. And it's doomed to fail. It's doomed to fail. But here's what Paul says in Acts chapter 17 and verse 27. In Acts 17, 27, we read that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Paul the apostle is preaching in Athens, the center of paganism, the center of worldly materialism. And he says, hey, lost people, hey, pagans, Hey, you wicked sinners! Hey, you that don't know the true God! Come to Him. He's not far from you. Seek Him, and you can find Him. Oh, that the world would come to Jesus Christ. Sadly, many in the world today don't want Jesus. They want to do it themselves. They want to set up their own system, their own government, their own world order. They want to do it their way instead of God's way. But in my experience in my life, I found that God's way is always better. When I try to do things my way, I mess it up. <laughs> I always make a mess. But when I let go and I let God, it always seems to turn out right. So I just want to let God be in control. I want to seek after Him. I want to look to Him. I want God to have His will and way. And I want to seek the Lord in all things. Thank God He sought me. Thank God that I found him on July 29th, 1992 at about 10 o'clock in the morning when I heard the gospel preached and I understood the blood atonement and all that he did for me. And I realized, oh, all my life I've been trying to work my way to heaven and do good and do good and do this and do that and do right. And I always made a mess of it. And I wasn't saved. Then I realized what God did for me and I realized that it's through faith that you come to God. That it's through faith that you receive eternal life. That it's through faith you get saved. Look at it says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Number one, are you saved? Have you sought after the Lord? Are you seeking him now? Are you saved? If you are saved, are you seeking him to come back at the rapture? Are you living every day of your life like, man, this could be the day that Jesus is coming? Are you casting aside all those sins and that weight that so easily besets you? Are you doing your best you can to live right and do right and to win souls for Jesus Christ and be a good testimony for Jesus? Are you doing that? That's what you need to do. Are you saved? Well, the way to come to God is through faith. Faith in what? Romans 3.25 says, through faith in His blood. Because Jesus Christ is the blood atonement for sins. And it's only through His shed blood that we can get to heaven. Get to heaven. Are you washed in the blood of Jesus Christ? It's the blood that forgives. Ephesians 1.7, in whom we have redemption through His blood. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15.1-4. through 4, And it's all about how that Christ died for our sins. How did He die? He shed His blood. And every drop of blood came out of him. And he died as the Lamb of God in order to take away the sins of the world. But you must come to Jesus Christ. You must seek him. You must look for him. You must try to find him. And the only way to find him is through the scriptures. The Bible, say the Bible, the Bible says that the Bible or the scriptures is able to make you wise unto salvation. Salvation how? Which is through faith. Come to Jesus Christ by faith and trust the blood atonement for salvation. That's how to be saved. Have you come to Jesus? The gospel again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, how that Christ died for our sins. He took my sin and paid for my sins so that I don't have to. Where do you pay for sin? Well, according to the Bible, the payment for sin uh, to a person who's an unbeliever is a place called hell. 
a horrible place of flame and torment and fire and anguish and pain. But that's where people go who reject Jesus Christ, and that's where they pay for the evil that they have done in this world. For all eternity, they'll spend. Of course, they'll get out one time if they go to hell, and that's to go before God at the great white throne of judgment. And then they'll be cast into the lake of fire, where there's eternal torment, the Bible says. What a horrible thing. I don't want that. Some people look at Christians and they say, oh, you Christians are just so mean and hateful, and you, all you do is, is tell people they're going to hell. And I look at that and go, well, that's not the kind of Christian I am. The Bible says that, yes. But I'm trying to tell you, here's the way not to go there. And here's the way to be delivered from that. Here's the way to be saved from that. Here's the one who paid for your sin so that you don't have to go there and pay for yourself. Here's the way to be saved if you'll seek after God. If you'll look to him who paid for your sins, you can have forgiveness and now you can have eternal bliss in heaven with Christ. It's all up to you to decide if you want Jesus or not. Do you want forgiveness of your sins? Do you want to take the free gift that is eternal life and a place in heaven and a mansion? Or do you want to go do it yourself and pay for it yourself? Not me, boy. I'll take the one who paid for me. I receive him by faith. I trust the blood. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now I know I'm saved. Now I know I'm on my way to heaven. So are you looking to Jesus for salvation? Are you looking to Jesus for the rapture? That's what we need to do. How about daily as we go through things? I get so many emails and phone calls from people and all the things that they're going through. And boy, what an awful world we live in and all the things that we all go through. It's horrible. We're all suffering. But did you know that as we go through it, we need to look to Jesus? Because he's the one that gives us comfort. He's the one that gives us grace. He's the one that gives us mercy and truth and love. Oh, the love of Jesus. I don't know how I would make it through this world without Jesus Christ and knowing how much he loves me. There was a time in my life I felt like no one loved me. But now I know that I'm loved, greatly loved, by Jesus Christ. And he helps me through. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, if you will. Let's go there. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we read... That in, in this life, there's going to be sorrow and trials and, and, and tribulations, you know. Read through this uh, first part of chapter 4 for that. And how it talks about um, there's somebody out there who's trying to keep you from seeing the gospel. Trying to blind your eyes, and that's Satan. Don't follow Satan. Follow the light. Jesus is the light. Look for the light. When it's dark outside, your eyes automatically look for where is some light. And your eyes are drawn to the light. You know who Jesus Christ is? In the book of John, it says he's the light. Are you looking for the light? Are you seeking the light? What happens if you walk around in the darkness? Well, I get up in the middle of the night and there's no light on, and I try to go to the bathroom or something. Sometimes I'll stub my toe because it's so dark I don't see. And I go, ah, 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 and it hurts. The better thing for me to do is to always reach over and grab a flashlight and then go, and then I won't get hurt. There's a lot of people in this world that are hurting, and they don't understand they're in darkness, and they need the light to help them see what it is that's making that hurt. And through the light, you can get find forgiveness, you can find comfort, you can find relief, because Jesus is there to help you through that, and he can take away your pain. And as it goes on there, it talks about in verse 8 being troubled on every side and perplexed and talks about suffering and things like that but look at what it says in verse 13 to 18 we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believed and therefore have i spoken we also believe and therefore speak this is to believers are you a believer have you trusted christ yet if not come to jesus for salvation if you are saved Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. We're about to have Thanksgiving this month of November. You have anything to be thankful for? 
Oh, there's a lot of things you can um, talk about and a lot of things you can say I'm not thankful for and you can complain about. And oftentimes we do because it seems like the bad things are more than the good things in our lives. Yeah, oftentimes it feels like that. But the Bible says, in all things, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Look to the good. Look to the silver lining. Um, dwell on the good things, not the bad things. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundance of grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perisheth, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Are you renewed day by day? God can renew you daily as you read your Bible, sing hymns, get close to Him day by day. And with each passing moment, strength I find to go through this life. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Does He help you day by day? Maybe it's because you're not coming to Him. Maybe it's because you're not seeking Him. Maybe you need to get closer to the Lord. For our light affliction... <laughs> which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. No matter what you're going through, you will never go through what Jesus Christ went through. He went through all that pain and all that suffering. Yeah, that was awful. But he also felt the weight of the world, literally, on his shoulders because he paid for the sin of everyone. Nothing you go through in this life will ever be as bad as what Jesus went through for you. So think about that. And it's only for a moment. There's not much time left. Jesus is coming soon. And whatever's happening is only for a short time. Why are we here? We're here to tell people about Jesus and be an example and lay up treasures in heaven and do right. And it's not much longer. So don't give up. Don't give up. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We should be looking at eternity and thinking about eternity instead of thinking about down here. Because everything you do in this life affects eternity. Did you know that? Have you ever won someone to Jesus Christ? If you ever have, guess what you did? You changed their eternity from a place where they'll be suffering forever to now that they're saved, they'll be in a place forever where they'll be thankful and happy. And they'll probably turn over to you and say, man, I'm so thankful you told me the gospel. Boy, it's so great to be here rather than down there. So have you ever won someone to Jesus Christ? Why not? Why don't you go out and share the gospel with people? Well, I wanted to encourage you today and I want to encourage you by saying, keep your eyes on things above, not on things on the earth. Keep thinking about Jesus and his return because he's coming soon. Do everything you can for him. Keep looking up. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5, it's all about the gospel. You need daily to share the gospel. Have you given out any gospel tracts lately? The old preacher said, if you give out three gospel tracts a day, you have given out over a thousand at the end of the year, in a year's time. Imagine a thousand times presenting the gospel in a year. What an opportunity. If you don't have gospel tracts, get some gospel tracts. I have a video on YouTube about gospel tracts. But let me read this to you. First Thessalonians chapter 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. The early church, when Paul was out preaching to them, they were all in affliction. There, everyone was suffering. But when they got saved, they had joy. Because there's power in the Holy Ghost with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread about, abroad, spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, 
and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Many in the world are worshiping idols. They're loving and looking to things here on the earth and worshiping that. That is a carnal thing. That is a temporal thing. And it's going to end. It'll never last forever. We need to look to the one who lasts forever and trust him because he's the only one that's important. But look what he says in verse 10. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Paul the Apostle tells his converts, here's what I want you to do. Have joy, have happiness, have peace, serve the Lord, preach the gospel, and wait for the Son from heaven who has delivered us from the wrath to come. Thank God I'm saved from hell. I'm not going to hell. I'm saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I have a message to give to the nations. It's an important message. And that message is, you don't have to burn. You can live for all eternity in heaven with Jesus if you come to him for salvation. If you are saved and you're going through things, don't let the devil discourage you and get you down. Wait patiently upon the Lord. Keep looking up because it's all going to be over soon. We're all going to be up in heaven shouting and singing and praising God. Because all this horrible stuff will be over. And then from then on, it's a new start. It's a new beginning. It's eternity without sin, and without sorrow, and without sickness. And it's living with Jesus Christ for all eternity. Could you ask for anything more? Folks, put God first. Keep looking up. And try to win people to Jesus Christ. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I know it was a short sermon. But uh, sometimes I have lots to do, <laughs> and so I did my best this week. I hope it's a blessing to you. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.